Are you running a hyperbaric clinic? Or maybe you're a patient or a loved one that's been recently diagnosed with dementia, and you're wondering if hyperbaric could help patients with either mild, moderate, or severe dementia, and you're wondering, does hyperbaric help? Can hyperbaric help? And if so, what are some of the benefits or changes we might expect by applying hyperbaric for patients diagnosed with dementia? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Now, hyperbaric is absolutely part of that conversation that we'll cover today. I also just wanna say broadly, that hyperbaric is not the cure for dementia or Alzheimer's. It's also not, in my opinion, to be done alone. Dementia is a very complex disease and requires a multidimensional therapy in order to really help these patients move in the right direction. And for me, that would include nutritional changes, certain supplements, potentially IV, methylene blue, red light therapy, hyperbaric oxygen, many different factors to try to really make a dent and improve cognitive performance and neuroplasticity over long periods of time. That being said, let's just break down and discuss sort of the three broad categories within dementia. There'd be vascular dementia, which is specifically neurodegeneration brought on by damage to the blood vessels, the vasculature, which are in charge of delivering oxygen and nutrients to those tissues, as well as getting rid of waste products from those tissues. A more generalized dementia, which is really just an umbrella term to describe a category of neurocognitive and neurodegenerative disease. And Alzheimer's, which is the most common form of dementia, which is categorized by accelerated neurocognitive changes, accelerated memory changes, far beyond what would be considered normal for somebody's age, and also associated with very specific brain changes that can be measured through diagnostic testing or postmortem. Generally speaking, research has been done using hyperbaric for all three categories of dementia. And anecdotally, I would say that we've seen changes and improvements within all three categories. There's more research been done on vascular dementia than Alzheimer's. However, that research is growing year after year. From my clinical experience, I would say vascular dementia has the highest chances of changing, especially when we get to it quickly, because of how impactful hyperbaric is in healing our vascular system, healing the endothelial lining and growing new blood vessels. The entire disease of vascular dementia is related to vascular damage, and hyperbaric is well known to improve so many of those different consequences, leading to improved cognition relatively quickly once we help this patient heal from the cause of what the problem is. Other research on conditions like Alzheimer's also show great promise. And overall, with all versions of dementia in treating patients with hyperbaric, we would typically see improved cognition, improved memory, improved cognitive processing speed, improved movement patterns, both in fine motor skills as well as gross motor skills, things like walking, and balance, but also in other things like reading and writing. In addition to healing the vasculature, specifically, let's say, with vascular dementia, hyperbaric is also very well known to reduce neuroinflammation, so bringing the inflammation down in the central nervous system and in the brain. It's also well known to improve neuroplasticity and neurosynapses, so growing new connections between neurons and helping build better and stronger pathways between the different neurons in our brain. It also is known to release central nervous system stem cells, which allow for these stem cells to move in and mobilize into old and damaged tissues and help replace those with new naive cells that can now grow and foster into healthy younger neurons, again, creating more and more healthy synapses. It's important to note that the brain only makes up about 2% of our body mass, but it uses up over 20% of all the oxygen we bring into our body. It's not uncommon for small areas of the brain to become hypoxic due to small bits of damage over many decades of life or for inflammation to be blocking the normal transmission or delivery of oxygen from our blood supply to our brain tissue. And as a result of even small amounts of hypoxia, brain tissue can downregulate function very quickly. By creating an environment that allows such a high level of oxygen to be delivered to these tissues, it can literally help wake up and improve the function of dormant or damaged tissues, helping to improve brain function over a series of these treatments. There's really no absolute treatment for any type of dementia. And even if we see great changes that we're looking for with hyperbaric, it's not the cure, the treatment of the disease, and it is something that would require maintenance over time. A standard protocol for somebody with dementia would be at least 40 hours of treatment over the course of about eight weeks. That would just be the initial 
introduction of hyperbaric oxygen to that person. And assuming we start to see the changes that we all hope and expect to see, there would be some type of ongoing care necessary for years and years because this disease is not one that is typical to stop. And therefore, if we can start to halt some of the changes in the symptoms that we're seeing, we need to be able to continue those therapies over a really long period of time. And again, this therapy should not be considered to be done by itself. It should be in combination with other synergistic therapies, as I mentioned earlier in this video. As per usual, when we do a video on hyperbaric oxygen and the associated benefits with a particular condition, we will link below to some of the studies that have been published that show the benefits that I'm describing in this video. If perhaps you're concerned about what the process would be of getting a patient with dementia into the chamber, how do we keep the family confident and comfortable with the process? How do we keep the patient comfortable during the treatments? We've done a video to explain some of those details and we'll link to that here. And you can click that video and take a look at some of those policies and procedures that we recommend clinics have so that we can keep families and patients happy, comfortable, and safe throughout the process of all their treatments. As always, thanks again for your attention and we'll see you on the next video.